Hey, what's going on? This is Chris from Magpie Modular, and today we're going to do a video demo overview of our new module, the Double Decca. This is a collaboration with Jim from Neutron Sound, and it started off with me looking through Modular Grid, the variety of different MIDI output modules available for Eurorack, trying to find something versatile or close enough to work with to use with the Octatrack, and I just wasn't finding it. We realized that specifically because of the number of different ways you can parse and output different MIDI data that the chances of finding a pre-configured output module that fit the needs perfectly were basically zero, so that's the problem we decided to tackle with this project. And so what we ended up with is what we call the Dodeca. It's an open source, open hardware um, platform that you can basically code to work with whatever external MIDI sequencer you want, and this is what it looks like. So this is 12 output. Um, it has MIDI input jack here, which isn't currently set up. It's 6 HP, and it uses a TNC microcontroller, which you load code onto that parses the MIDI. And so that's how we end up at the Double Deca, which is a Octatrack specific implementation of this. It uses two of them, and you can actually daisy chain uh, the Dodecas together, any number that you want, until you run out of money, common sense, or whatever. But the thing you're most likely to run out of is bandwidth, because uh, MIDI is a pretty slow protocol, around 3K a second or something like that. And so let me walk you through this really quickly, because I, I absolutely love this module, and it's more or less changed how I interact with my entire Eurorack system. And so the output or the layout of this mirrors the uh, Octatrack layout. And so the Octatrack eight part sequencer for MIDI is incredibly powerful. Um, each track is individually addressable. You can send out notes and gates and triggers, LFOs, control messages, anything you want. And so we set it up to basically allow each track to be addressable. So this is track one, it's a complete MIDI voice. This is track two node output, which is basically a gate. Track three, track four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so. All the red here is continuous controller messages, which are addressable from any track. We'll get, get into that in a minute. But it also sends out um, MIDI clock set to the tempo. And so because this is a prototype, um, it's sending out this, this one here instead of here, where it will be on the final version. So you can just ignore that. But it sends out MIDI clock, which is pretty phenomenal for syncing your Eurorack to all of your external gear. So without, without any further ado, let's just jump right in. OK, so I have a basic patch set up here. And I want to use that to illustrate the power of the Octrack MIDI sequencer in conjunction with the double deca. Starting with track two, we're going to send a gate output to the gate input of elements, audio out of elements, into the 4MS dual looping delay, and the audio output of that into my mixer. The MIDI clock out from the double deca is going to the ping input of the dual looping delay to keep everything beat synced. This is sending uh, tempo information for my master clock, which is the analog rhythm. So when I press play on this, everything else starts, sends its MIDI clock, this stays in time. So one thing that's interesting to notice about the Octrack MIDI sequencer is when you enter a note, you can individually address per note the velocity and length of that note. So from the velocity from 0 to 127 translates to 0 to 10 volts in Eurorack, and the length goes from just a little bit over a trig all the way up to about two measures at 126 and an infinite hold at 127. That allows you to do some really interesting um, cinematic and bowed sounds on elements or holding sounds for very long times. You can do stepped uh, patterns. You can do interesting trig patterns with uh, low pass gates. and. The, the possibilities are kind of endless. So I'm not going to get too deep into that, but we will start with a very basic pattern, and I'll show you how we can build upon that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is enter a really simple pattern, bring the beat in, bring the delay line up, start tweaking elements a bit until I get to a good workable point, and then we can start adding modulation and all the extra good stuff. So here we go. So I think that's a good stopping point. There's a number of things we can do here. I'm going to start with using track five to trigger the reverse delay line on a dual looping delay. And so one thing to note with the Octrack sequencer is that each track can have its own time 
time signature and playback speed. And so if you're out of record mode and this red light isn't lit up, you can go to function bank and that goes to your pattern settings. And it's in the scale mode, so it's whether it's uh, normal or per track. I have it set to per track, so that means that on track five, I can go to function scale and set, set it to 64 notes, which is four measures. And the original one will be set to a 60 note loop. And so that means that I can do some really interesting things. And I will get out of this mode, drop a note on number one, which is there, and then send that out to the reverse delay line. So we can hear that in a second. some interesting variation. Um, and I'm noticing the things that I like to play with on this are the timbre, the brightness, and uh, position's kind of nice as well. There's a lot of variety in here. And so we can do a number of um, ways of controlling it. So for each note on track two that's being sent out, you can assign an LFO to that and use that to send a sample and hold every time you s trigger something. And you can assign it to any of these CC outputs here. So I'll show you how to do that really quickly. And I'm sorry that I don't have um, like a GoPro set up to record the screen. Uh, I tried to do that and got lost in the technical variety. So since this is my first video, you just have to bear with me. So for this, we'll go to, say I want to come out uh, CC9 here. So uh, I'm on Control 2 page, and all the CCs are set to off right now. And if I hit Function and turn it, I can actually get it to a zero value. And when I turn it, you should be able to see um, the value change on the dodeca, and that's sending out a voltage. And so with that set up, I can then go to LFO and then double click that, double tap it, and then set the parameter to control to CC5, uh, we do CC9. The wave you want is a random wave, multiplier times one, trig set to trig, speed is whatever you want, and depth is the, uh, the amount of voltage that sends out. So with that set up, you should be sending random voltages out nine every single time it tr re-triggers. So the next thing we could do is use some of these additional tracks, say like track three right here, and you can record uh, lanes of automation on it. And so you can take any of these CC controllers, put it into whatever you want to control. And so say for instance that I want to control the brightness on this, um, I'll pick something like uh, CC8 here, plug that in, set my knob to the correct position, and then pick the track that I want to use it on Again, go to C2, sorry, controller two. Again, these are all off, so if I hit uh, function and turn it, you should be seeing the light turn up here. And so I'm gonna set this to two measures and start the whole sequence and record some live automation, which will immediately start playing back. So you can do that with multiple tracks of automation if you want. It gets a little messy to keep track of, so I, I try to keep everything separate and clean. Um, one of the beauties, though, is that with 
breaking up your automation into all these different tracks is that each track having its own loop length and time signature, you can do some very, very interesting uh, polyrhythmic and easy to change pattern manipulation. And so let me see if I can just give an example of that really quickly. Since the intention of this video wasn't to do a complete overview of all the possibilities, uh, there's definitely some things that got left out. We didn't look at the complete voice, the arpeggiator. Um, each of the LFO, or each track has a pattern generator in place of the LFO. You can use LFOs as a single cycle trigger. I mean, it's there's so many interesting things you can do. Um, I'll cover those in a future video when I have it properly set up so I can get the screen and do a slightly more uh, thought out walk through. But for now, I'm going to do a little jam to play us out, show off some of the other features I haven't really talked about. And for now, the circuit boards and panels are available at our site. If you really want one of these and you don't do DIY, there's, I'll see if I can find a link for um, builders who are willing to do this. We're not going to be releasing this commercially just because uh, we're a two-person shop and don't really have the ability to build or troubleshoot. So um, we leave that to the DIY world, which is kind of the whole reason for this project. So with that, here we go. And thanks for watching.